Hey, thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching another worldwide bookkeeping video. On this channel, we do a lot of bookkeeping related videos, especially QuickBooks online tips. Tonight, we're going to be answering a question from one of our viewers and new subs. So uh, thank you very much, Lovely Lux, for the question. The question on tonight's video was, um, do you have any tips on how I can do several years of taxes at once? I believe there's a limit to how far back you can go on QuickBooks. Thank you. Um, so thank you so much, Lovely Lux, for that uh, comment and question. If you're watching this video, please comment on any of our videos. Make sure that you like, subscribe so you're alerted. Uh, I guess you have to click the bell too, but anything you can do to make sure that you're alerted that uh, we've made some new content. And if you comment, we'd love to answer any questions you might have on either bookkeeping or uh, QuickBooks Online specifically. So please make sure to do that. And thanks for watching the videos, first and foremost, even if you're not commenting, liking, or subscribing. We love you still. Anyway, the answer to Lovely Lux's question, I did comment, I replied on this, um, and we'll jump into this a little bit more and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I do believe you can go back many years within QuickBooks, okay? And there's different levels to that. I have recorded transactions. Uh, if you've seen our videos, we commonly work in the sample company of QuickBooks online. Now, I've gone into that sample company and I've recorded transactions as far back historically as the year 2000. They get recorded in there and they show up as from the year 2000. So I think you can go back at least 22 years and it would probably even let you go back even further. Now, what Lovely Lux may be referring to, how far back can you go in QuickBooks, probably has to do with how far back a bank will import transactions. So we're going to jump in on the on a screen share. All right, so, so here we are in our uh, trusty sample company. We're in Craig's Design and Landscaping. We typically find ourselves in the banking screen over here on the left margin. So this is the view that we take a look at when we have our bank accounts added to the chart of accounts and then connected, meaning that bank account is connected from QuickBooks Online to its uh, bank's website and the bank is importing transactions in. Now, when you set up a bank feed, a bank connection like that, there is a question where QuickBooks will ask you, how far back do you want to import transactions from this account? When you answer that question, it's merely a request to the bank saying, I'd like to have transactions going back as far as this date. So um, every bank is a little bit different in how far back they're going to agree to go. So I've seen it. It's, it's not uncommon where, let's say you get an example of if you were connecting a bank account, you hadn't done bookkeeping for 2021 or 2020. And as of right now, the date that I'm recording this is February 18th. 2022. So if you needed to go back, you know, we're talking 26 months, 25 months, I guess, to the beginning of 2020, you could request, hey, send me every transaction you have starting on January 1st, 2020, moving forward. So you could request that from the bank. Now, if your bank only makes um, the last 90 days worth of transactions available, that's all they're going to send. You requested going back to 2020 and you got 90 days worth of transactions. That is not uncommon. So what do you do when you only get a certain date range imported? If the bank will only go back 90 days or if they'll only go back one year and you need to go back further than that, what can you do? Well, in addition to importing transactions by the bank feed, there's two other methods of entering in transactions. One of those is a manual upload, okay? Little bit of work involved, but um, still gonna be a little bit faster than your third alternative. Um, so what I'm talking about with a manual upload, when we're on the banking screen, we can see this button here where it says link account. We'll go ahead and click on that. That's going to be if you had added a new bank account to your chart of accounts. Like let's say you went to the bank today and opened up a new checking account. Uh, if you click on that link bank account, now that's going to be where you can actually establish that connection from QuickBooks to your bank's website to import those transactions. So you would go in and put in your bank's website here and sign into the bank. 
and get all those transactions imported. Now that's what we just did with that requesting transactions to be imported from January 1st, 2020. And we found we only got the last 90 days worth of transactions, right? So when we go back to the banking screen, right next to link account, there's this little drop down arrow. If we click on that, it's going to give us some uh, options here. We can upload from file. Now this is where we manually upload a list of transactions. So it's going to give us the directions for that right here where it says manually upload your transactions. And how does this work? Well, you're going to open up a new browser tab, go over to your bank's website, get signed in. And then it says here on step number two, it says export your bank statement in a CSV, QFX, QBO, OFX, or, or TXT format. There's a couple of things with that direction I think can kind of get a little uh, confusing there. When it says export your bank statement, we are looking for the transactions more so than the statement. If you find anything on your bank's website where it says download activity, download transactions, export transactions or activity, that's what you're looking for. Most banks make this available where you can download these files. There still may be a limitation how far back you can go. For instance, I'm working on a client right now, Chase Bank. They do not allow you to download transactions farther back than two years. Now, how do I know this? This is a client who we had, we're having to do stuff from 2018, 19, 20, so we can't download those transactions. But if we're within the last 24 months, you can go back and export those from Chase Bank. So that's that's what you do. Now, the other part, besides bank statement, where I, I said you're looking for transactions, the other thing that I would just recommend is it says that you can use any of these five formats. That's true. You can. If your bank makes this QBO file, if that's available as a choice for you, choose QBO. That is going to be the cleanest transition from when you download that from your bank's website and then you import it into QuickBooks. It's formatted exactly the way QuickBooks Online wants to see that. One of the more common file types is CSV. It's a great way to import data into QuickBooks. Now, the issue that I tend to run in with uh, CSV files is every bank formats their CSV files a little bit differently. And we've done some videos on what are some of the issues that can happen with CSV files, but there's additional questions you have to answer once you import those uh, transactions into QuickBooks. It can still be done, but just you'll just kind of have to work through those. And um, you can watch some of the videos. We'll put links to them here uh, on the screen so that if you are working with a CSV file, you can see how you can deal with some of those issues. Uh, but once you get the list of transactions downloaded, hopefully as a QBO file, you get that downloaded on your computer, and then you just drag and drop or select the file from where it's saved into QuickBooks here. Now, once you do that, you, you upload that, QuickBooks will then say, what account do you want us to connect this to? So if this is from your, like, let's just say your operating checking account, match your operating and checking account from the chart of accounts to this file, and then it'll import, and those transactions will look exactly like the ones that are imported from your automatic bank. So that's the second option. Now, where I talked about my client I'm working with, where we are going back further than two years and Chase Bank will not um, allow for a download, you can't export transactions greater than two years. Well, your other option on that is going to be um, old school. When I started using QuickBooks, I don't think we even had bank feeds. Whoever taught me how to use QuickBooks he didn't teach me about bank fees, so I don't think it was available. Everything was manual. Now, this was on QuickBooks Desktop. You still have the ability to manually enter transactions in QuickBooks Online. So if you have to go back further, here's what you do. Any expense, you manually create an expense. Where you go through here, manual expense, you're going to say, who did you pay? What account did this come from? Is this like the checking or your savings or your credit card? What, when was the date of the transaction? You know, it's an optional thing. You could specify what payment method, but that's really going to be more taken care of when you select this payment account right here. If you put any tags, if you use those, um, and then category. This is like when you're categorizing transactions, 
in your automatic bank feed the categories like is this advertising automobile subscriptions equipment rental etc you can put a description the amount and either save and close or if you have a bunch to enter save and new uh, so that's entering expenses manually you can also record deposits manually so that's going to be through uh, the work of a deposit there you have it you can um, manually enter these transactions if you have to go back even further hopefully uh, your bank will allow for a download of further in the past than two years but if not download as much of those as you can and the other transactions you may have to do manually so that's really the uh, explanation of it again great question thank you so much lovely Lux for subscribing asking the question we really appreciate you watching and commenting on this. So anyway, hey, if you have any questions uh, about QuickBooks Online, please uh, comment on this video or any of our other videos. We do try to stay on top of those comments and make sure that we're, we're getting everybody's questions answered, uh, especially this time of year. We know it's uh, you, you might have some questions going. So again, thank you so much. Uh, we will see you on the next video.